We got a call from Bob Hope. He wanted to see us, and he was at the Hampshire House in New York. And uh, we went down and uh, went up to his apartment, which was fairly luxurious by my standards, at any rate. He was a, you know, Bob was uh, pretty successful in those days. He had done Roberta, done uh, stage shows, and he was doing... Um, he did a, a, a short monologue on the Lucky Strike hit parade, but he had never had a complete show all of his own. So we went up and Bob was there and he had our material. And he, uh, he looked at us and he said, um, uh, how much do you guys expect to get paid for this shit? And uh, I looked at Milt, who had become my agent because Milt was twice as big as I was. He was over 250 pounds, I guess. And as I said, it was most of it. Most of it was ketchup, because that's all he ate, as far as I could see. And so Milt said, "A hundred dollars a week." And uh, Bob looked at him and he said, "Each." And Milt said, "Each." And Bob said, "That's a little rich for my blood." And that was the end of the meeting. And we went out and we went down in the elevator. I said to Milt, y "You blew it. You know, a hundred dollars each. That's a lot of money." And uh, you know, uh, we're out of it. He said, "Forget it." He says. All the time we were talking, he said, he didn't say one funny thing. He needs us. And so a week later, later we got the call, and we were hired for Bob Hope's Pepsodin show. And the year was 1938, I guess, by that time. And uh, we went out to Hollywood uh, on, the, uh, on the Challenger, <laughs> uh, Southern Pacific from, uh, I guess we took another train to uh, Chicago, and Milt's wife was with him. I was a bachelor still. And uh, we arrived in Hollywood, and uh, immediately we got a call from Bob, who was at Paramount Pictures, and he was making a film, Thanks for the Memory, I think may have been the title, because Bob had made a big hit in the uh, Broadway melody in 1938, where he introduced Thanks for the Memory, and he decided to adopt it as a theme song. And we went out to Paramount to see him, very impressed. Well, that's right, and uh, he was very happy, and uh, uh, he said, uh, uh, they've just written a new song, uh, Robin and Ranger have just written a new song for me. And he said, would you like to hear it? Oh, my God, sure, and it was uh, Two Sleepy People. And he said, I think that'll be as big a hit as Thanks for the Memory. It was a hit, but nothing has ever been as big a hit as Thanks for the Memory. But at any rate, we started on the show, and there were eight writers who had been brought out to write the Bob Hope Pepsodent show. It was quite an experience, because at the time, here were eight writers, and we were just coming out of the Depression. It was pretty hard to make a living in those days. And so we were all writing against each other. And uh, usually, you know... I know one of the comedians said, who are you writing against this year? We were writing against the comedians, too. At any rate, uh, at the end of the first 13 weeks, because it went in 13-week cycles, Bob fired five of the eight. I was one of the three remaining, and he hired five more new writers to come in. And, however, he had to pay two weeks extra to the, those that he fired, so there were 13 writers writing one half-hour show. And Bob Hope insisted on everybody writing a complete show. And we would go up to his house here on Navajo Street, the one he rented, and we would all sit around all night. And the idea was that we would read our material aloud. And if it got laughs from guys whose jobs depended on their not laughing, Bob would check it and it would hopefully go into the preview of the show. Well, uh, Milt and I, of course, were partners. And when... Uh, Norman Panama and Mel Frank came along. We had quite a writing staff in those days. It went on to much, much greater things, including Sherwood Schwartz of the, uh, the famous Sherwood Schwartz of, of the Brady Bunch and so forth, and all of the others. And uh, we would sit around uh, reading, and uh, he complained to me because Norman, saw, Norman Panama did a Groucho Marx while he was reading their material, and he did it very well. He got laughs that he didn't deserve, and I just read the joke straight, and Milt was very upset about that. But at any rate, that was the beginning of my first ulcer, in, in, incidentally.